Hi, welcome to Christensen Wealth Management. I'm Michael Christensen. Thank you for taking time out of your day to watch this weekly stock market update for the week ending Friday, January 11th, 2018. Today I'm going to share some information with you from legendary investor Greg Morris, who wrote this book right here called Investing with the Trend. Greg Morris has over 45 years of investing wisdom under his belt, and he uh, went on and did a program today on StockCharts.com uh, called uh, Market Watchers Live. And I am going to use some of his material and share some of his slides because I'm sure he would want you to know. Greg Morris said, what are some of the myths that are in the investment world that people need to bust? Uh, myth busting is definitely a, a good thing to do in the investment world because there are so many things that people do wrong when it comes to investing. The first myth today is that buy and hold investing is the only way to be successful in the stock market. And I'm going to show you a chart right now because I was talking to a friend last night and he said uh, to me, you know, just buy and hold and hold on to those investments because the stock market always comes back. Yes, the stock market does come back, but the time you waste by being flushed down the drain in a bear market never comes back. And you will see in this chart that I'm about to show you that if you get flushed down a bear market like we did in 2008, you can easily spend five years of your life going nowhere with your investments. That is time that you can never get back. On my homepage at ChristensenWealth.com, I have a video. And in that video, I tell the viewer that if a stock market crashes every 10 years, and let's just say that the crash is 50% or whatever it is, if it takes two years to go down with the bear market and it takes three years to get back to even that's five years out of every 10 years that are spent going nowhere with your investments and if the average investor starts saving when they're 35 and they want to stop saving at 65 and retire then if those statistics prove to be true which i'm just using them as hypotheticals that means that 15 years out of the 30 years that you spend investing are spent going absolutely nowhere toward your financial goals. What if you could just do a little bit better? I'm not saying that there's a guarantee that you can do better. I'm just saying that based on these statistics that I'm about to show you, bear markets are not your friend and it is best to avoid them whenever possible. And it's not that hard to do to avoid those bear markets you just need to have some simple strategies in place first of all let's go ahead and take a look at the chart that greg morris shared today on market watchers live in this chart from greg morris he has outlined the bear markets in the dow jones industrial average from february 1885 to december 2013 and you can see that there are 15 major declines in that time frame since 1885, ranging from a decline of 89% all the way down to a decline of 20%. And I'm just going to cover a few of these here uh, that are very specific. The Great Depression, or the crash of 1929, took the stock market down 89%, which required 824% to get back to break even. And if you had bought in 1929, you would have had to wait until 1954 to get back to break even, or in that case, 25 years, your investments would have gone nowhere. And the, mo the least painful one down here, which was a loss of 20% from peak to bottom, was in 1886 until 1888. So it wasn't... Uh, as painful I guess you could say it was only a few a few months anyway but it took 25 percent to get back to break even and in order to get back to uh, break even here it was 600 actually 29 
uh, 29 months to get back to break even or about two and a half years of time was spent going nowhere. Now let's just look at a couple of the most recent ones. October, sorry, the 2000 stock market peak to October of 2002. It took you until October of 2006 to get back to break even. So that was six years and 10 months your investments would have gone nowhere. And the other one that I'd like to cover here is good old 2007 and eight and nine, right up here. The Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped 53%, requiring a gain of 116% to get back to even. And the peak was in October of 07, the trough or the bottom was March of 09. And it wasn't until March of 2013 that you would have gotten back to even on your investments. And so that was, that was five years and five months that your investments would have gone nowhere before uh, you started making money again. So what I'm trying to say here is, yes, the market does spring back. It does come back and it has come back since the year 1885. The problem is you can spend anywhere from two and a half years to 25 years going nowhere on your investments. And though the market does come back, the time lost on investing and waiting to get back to even never comes back. And we only have a limited amount of time in our lives to achieve our financial goals. Another myth that Greg Morris covered was the myth that you must remain invested at all times or you will miss the 10 best days each year. Let's take a look at what Greg Morris said about that. Greg Morris mentioned that Wall Street likes to keep investors invested because that is how Wall Street makes their money. By keeping investors invested, they can collect fees on mutual funds and other investment products. However, it is not always the investor's best scenario to remain invested at all times. If you began with an investment of $100 in 1979 in the S&P 500, and you missed the 10 worst days each year by being out of the stock market or the S&P 500 on those 10 days every year since 1979, your $100 would have grown to about $8 million over that time frame. So over 40 years, $100 turned into 8 million, again, by missing the 10 worst days every year. Now, if you had invested as a buy and hold investor, you would have had the purple shaded line along the middle here, and your $100 would have turned into a little over $1,000, or about $1,100 probably. There's also a green line that is overlaid on top of this purple line. That green line is if you miss the 10 best days every year and the 10 worst days every year, then your $100 would have ended up at about $1,100 as well, or maybe $1,150. About the same as a buy and hold investor in the S&P 500. So by missing the 10 best days and 10 worst days, you did not gain any performance advantage at all. Now, buy and hold investors who miss the 10 best days every year. So by missing the 10 best days, I just want to say that by uh, being out of the market on the 10 best days each year for 40 years, your $100 would have turned into uh, probably about 75 cents. So what this chart shows is Missing the best days is this red line, but missing the worst days is this blue line. That tells me, as this chart shows, and according to Greg Morris, that it is more important to miss the worst days every year than it is to miss the best days every year. And yet, Wall Street always tells us you need to remain invested because you'll miss the best days. That myth shows, according to this chart, that missing the best days 
makes zero difference. Risk management and avoiding the down days, the big down days, is the most important part of investing in the S&P 500. Thank you again for watching. Uh, I hope you got some uh, perspective out of these two myths that I covered today. One, uh, buy and hold investing is not always the best strategy because you can spend half your life going nowhere on your investments and that is time you can never get back. The stock market again does bounce back but the time lost by investors waiting never comes back. And number two, uh, remaining invested at all times is not as good of a opportunity either. As you saw from the chart, there are many scenarios, especially over the last 40 years, where missing the 10 worst days every year are better than missing the 10 best days. So risk management is key, in my opinion. And at Christensen Wealth Management, we do not believe in buy and hold investing. And I also want to say that this week, Christensen Wealth Management celebrated its fourth anniversary, and I celebrated my 19th anniversary as a financial advisor. I started my career in 1999, and I've been through two stock market crashes, and I can tell you right now that they give you tremendous perspective as you watch the years go by and the time that is wasted for investors in this country. So take care of your hard-earned savings. And before you go, please do me a favor and click the subscribe button on this YouTube channel and click the little bell next to it so you'll be notified whenever additional videos are posted. And in the top right-hand corner of ChristiansenWealth.com and in the summary description of this page, you will find links to the Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter pages for Christensen Wealth Management. Please visit those when you have time and like or follow those pages while you are there. Well, have a great day. In a great week ahead, and I'll see you again in about another seven days. There will be another video that I am going to put out this week that is just a chart review of the Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ and some industry sectors. When you have time, please take a look at that video as well. Thanks again. Bye-bye.